This is the Basketball Show with Shane the Hammer Heel and Steve Mr. Magic Carfino. Brought to you by Unibet, TCL Plex, and News Corp. What they gonna say next? Hello and welcome to the Basketball Show. I'm Joe Healy alongside Shane the Hammer Heel. Shane, how are you going? I'm good. In the know with Joe for the whole show. I like that. My man Carfino on holidays with his bride, probably in bars singing away. I know. It's not going to be the same without him. Steve, where the bloody hell are you? Come on. (laughs) Not good enough. Um, No, plenty to get through regardless. Um, Shall we start with Hammer Time? Let's do it. And uh, sad topic to start with, but uh, with the bushfires and uh, some of the devastation that everybody is going through, or a lot of people are going through, but how proud is of uh, Australians of being able to get together and to be able to support everybody in need, and uh, none more than uh, some of the NBL players, and the NBL and the basketball community uh, more broadly, fantastic. Some of the things that we've come across, Mitch Creek, 4K, he's been able to raise for uh, his Looney Tunes shoes. Was it shoes or uniform? Uh, I think Something it was like the that. shoes. I actually, I think he, I feel like he had underwear as well, didn't he? Did he? I don't know if he, I actually, I don't Jeez, know if he, he could have got that. five grand if it wasn't <laughs> for that. Uh, the Breakers. Now, we've been harsh on the Breakers at different stages and Matt Walsh, but they raised 13 Ks. Talking about how many threes, they might want to do it more often because they uh, shot the ball well. 13 K and Matt Welsh, well done to you, mate. Mm-hmm. Uh, you doubled it up to 26 grand. And I think they've still got more fundraising uh, the next home game as well. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, I know the NBL have also come out and said that they are planning on doing something moving forward. Um, And Chris Golding spoke about it after their win the other night. We think he wraps it up pretty well. Take a listen. When we come out and do this, we get so caught up in what's going on in the game. Sometimes you have to, you know, win or lose. You have to take a second and realise that there's some people that are really struggling. Our country's really struggling at the moment. So I know us as a league... We give our sympathies out to everyone. I know we'll do something to raise some money, but everyone out there, if you can, dig into your pockets, help out. Much love to everyone struggling. Well said, Chris. Congratulations. Well, he's a, he's a star, but uh, he's a great spokesman for the league and the players. And uh, little birdie says that the NBA guys might be working on something big as well. Big pockets those boys have got to be able to uh, donate something. Massive pockets, but also a huge platform to raise awareness, not only in Australia for what's happening at the moment, but also just raising awareness for climate change and the fact that really something needs to be done. Also, um, us here at The Basketball Show, we have adopted a couple of koalas. You're a mum. Um, <laughs> yes. Married last month and now you're a mum. Yeah, moving forward. Twins. Moving forward quickly. So that's through WWF uh, Australia. No names yet. Um, wrestling koalas. Wrestling koalas. No, None of the koalas are being wrestled at the moment. Okay, You've seen all cool. the vision. They are all just being so lovely and accepting all the help that they can get. And it's so lovely. Um, but we wanted to do something... Um, to move forward as well. So this is obviously looking after their care. It's about rehabilitation. It's about planting trees to restore their environment and then moving forward to when they are actually let back out into the wild. So we'll have updates throughout the next couple of months as we uh, Love it. get the names back and that kind of thing. And also we wanted to adopt a couple of kangaroos. We couldn't do that, but we've just donated some uh, money to Animals Australia that will hopefully help the general animal population in this current crisis. Good stuff, well done. Yep, no, really, really good. This is the Starting Five, brought to you by TCL Plex Smartphones. All right, it is time for Starting Five, brought to you by TCL Plex. Hammer, what have you got, number one? Number one, the Phoenix. While they've got rid of their import, was it too late? I think it was too late. They needed to be able to get that done a little bit earlier. And uh, with that loss on the weekend to New Zealand, I think it is all over. Red Rover for Phoenix, good first year. Can't get it done, can they? I'm not sure. Just, And I say that because the other teams in that mix are all doing really Playing well at the better. moment as well. Um, a couple of shout-outs from the Phoenix that game, though. Robertson had 31 points. Dane Pino, who I know you've said that he's not your MIP, 17 points and 20 rebounds. Oh, he's in it. He, he's in discussion. Okay, and he's good. my notes for... Player of the week. <laughs> okay, great. We love Perfect. That. Um, Mitch Creek had 11 points. You probably expect more from him, but he did get into foul trouble, um, which obviously makes it difficult. But um, a big win for the Breakers. The Breakers are great. I love the way they're playing. And sometimes when you've got less, like Corey Webbs is not there. We know he's a superstar. But they're actually better without him. 
and uh, they're Which playing no their roles. Which no one would have picked. No, no, Everyone no. Everyone was in shock when he left. Hobson is playing great basketball. He's one of my favourite players to watch. He is so smooth, unselfish as well. Put up 19.6 assists. Abercrombie came out with a real aggressive mindset. Uh, Sec Henry, who got injured. But Finn Delaney makes a big difference to that team. Had a great off-season. NBA Summer League, national team, all the rest of it. Uh, but he is coming into his own, and they are looking good. They are. They're excitement machines at the moment, according to my colleagues at Fox Sports News. Um, it just seems that they're moving the ball really well, especially compared to Phoenix in that game. And also bench points, 29 for the Breakers, only 11 for the Phoenix. So that sort of shows that they've got a lot more depth and they're all coming to the floor. Playing well together. Love it. And number three, Sydney number three. Kings are back. Five yeah. of seven losses. Well, they didn't want to do interviews after five for seven losses, but uh, they got a win against Adelaide. Who wouldn't Adelaide want to talk to you, Shane? Oh, it was not me. Uh, it wasn't you? No, not me. Oh, who, who, who were they Just not wanting to talk general, to? in general. Okay. Not, sometimes coaches want to do interviews when they're 11 and 1, but not mm -hmm. as much. When they're... Fair enough. They're under pressure. <laughs> Cut it out. It's their job. <laughs> Everyone's under pressure. But they look good on the weekend. Yeah. Um, got it done. They've got the most talent in the league, so it's um, they've got as much of a chance to win the championship as anyone I would have thought. It was great to see uh, Andrew Bogut back. Um, double double, just great. having more of an impact and pa playing a few more minutes, which you know he's been lacking recently. So that was really good. Brad Newley and Jay Sean Tate, twenty points each, leading from the front. Loved it. Mm. And uh, Bogut, three post moves that we haven't seen for a while. They went to him in the block. They're a better team when uh, he gets touches in the block. And yesterday, the Perth Wildcats went down. Tariko White looked. Disinterested to me. Disengaged. We know he's a champion player. We saw it last year. 22 points he averaged in the uh, NBA, mm -hmm. NBL playoffs. And he w really single-handedly won that championship for them. A little bit of help from everybody else. But he was a superstar. Yesterday, two for nine. But just wasn't searching for opportunities. Didn't look like he was playing with any sort of enthusiasm. No intensity on defense. Got towed up uh, by Lamar Patterson. Yeah, well, Patterson was excellent. Do you think in terms of um, Tariko White, though, he just, to me, it was a progressive thing. He kept, he was, it's as if he was getting disheartened as the game was going on. How does he turn that around in the moment? Well, he needs to be a pro. That's what pros do. You're going to go through ups and downs. There's going to be times you miss shots and you get turnovers and fouls and whatever else. But when the team relies on you, when you average 17 points a game like he does, you have to stand up big on the road and you look at, uh, Cotton, he's always searching, he's making things happen. Even though they're double teaming him, they're denying him, he never stops moving and he's trying to do the best for his team. So no doubt Tariko White is a superstar, but you just need a little bit more enthusiasm uh, for him to get engaged early. And Lamar Patterson for the Bullets. <sighs> freak. 35 points. He was excellent, wasn't he? He was a freak. He, and he's so well-rounded. He can shoot the ball from three. He can create off the dribble, get to the basket himself. He plays with his back to the basket as well. And what a time for him to come up big in front of a healthy crowd up there in Brisbane. They were under pressure. They had to win. They got it done on the back of Lamar Patterson. He was excellent, but their shooting recently has been fantastic. Um, he was 50% from three. Jason Kadee was four from seven, so 57%. And Sobey was two from four. Shooting at 50% from beyond the arc, that's going to help you win games. Yeah, and Kadee was four out of four. His first four shots in the first half still came in and out of the game a little bit too much for me. When mm -hmm. you make four shots... You want to be able to keep playing. You want to get that rhythm going. You couldn't find that rhythm in the second half. But uh, that's what we expected from Brisbane pre-season, to be able to play like that. Interesting that didn't play the imports as much as what we've been calling for all mm -hmm. year. EJ Singler hardly played. Um, but good win for the Bullets. Definitely. And I know you're a fan of Will Magnate. How <laughs> awesome were a couple of those blocks? Three blocks, I think. That was and so good. The timing yep. of him at the defensive end is fantastic. Huge future. Uh, we love him here at the Basketball Show. All right, let's move on. We're going courtside with our correspondents around the country. Derek Rucker, the Queensland teams, they are making moves. What have you seen from them recently? Well, early in the round, the Cairns Taipans stamped their authority over the Brisbane Bullets once again up north. The Taipans seemingly have too much length, athleticism, and overall team energy 
for the Bullets to be able to defeat this season. But the Bullets did a good job yesterday in rebounding from that loss by knocking off the Perth Wildcats. And once again, this league is so tight. Often teams match up better against some teams that you may not expect. And that seems to be the case with the Perth Wildcats and the Bullets. The Wildcats don't have anyone that can handle Lamar Patterson. Therefore, they're continually in rotations, trying to figure out ways to double, to help out. And that poses all types of problems. The Bullets now are also getting the ball to the right people at the right times. Nathan Sobe is starting to play pretty good basketball. Kadi, Glidden, and Magne have found their roles. And now the Bullets are starting to play decent basketball. Let's see if they can maintain the consistency because they'll need it down the stretch if they are to figure in that Final Four. I'll talk to you guys next week. Happy New Year. Yeah, and I agree with Derek. They're starting to find their way a little bit, and it's taken a long time. The question mark is, is it too late with where they were situated uh, eighth on the ladder before that win against Perth? So we'll see what happens next week. But let's get over west to our man, Nick Lakovic. Talk to us, pal. Yeah, hi, guys. Well, this week I want to really dial in and focus in on the Perth Wildcats' defensive breakdowns against the Brisbane Bullets. Their second half performance was where they let themselves down and an opportunity to secure themselves a step closer for a top two finish. Well, here it is, the review session, and it's going to leave a few people ducking for cover. In particular, Dario Hunt. 3.20 left in the third quarter. The on-board pick and roll coverage between Sobey and Hodgson. Hodgson sets a butt screen here, and as you can see, Sobey turns the corner, gets in so deep, no containment of the ball, and Dario Hunt ends up leaving his feet. An easy pass and finish for Hodgson under the basket. Well, the very next possession on defense for the Wildcats, it was Braun in a dribble handoff with Hodgson. Again, no containment, no early pickup of the ball, and certainly no communication, except to the officials, where he was remonstrating about some call in a step up where he didn't communicate early enough once again. And then in the fourth quarter, 6.20 left in the fourth quarter, it was the on-board pick and roll coverage where Hodgson dropped Norton to his knees. A clear example of no early communication informing Norton that the screen was coming to his left. These are the plays that build frustration for both the players and the coaches. And if there are any chance to continue this dream run of playoffs and championships, they're going to need to tighten these up come playoff time. All right, thanks, Lacko. Let's go down to Victoria now, Paolo. How do you see things with the Melbourne teams holding up? Yeah, well, first I just want to send out all my thoughts to, to everyone who's been affected by the, the fires. Um, it's been such a horrific event. Um, I also want to send out my thanks to the, to the firefighters, the amazing work that they're doing, um, and also to the people who are donating time, effort and money behind the scenes. Uh, look, hopefully we can get through this and we can rebuild from this. And turning my attention to, to the basketball, a big win for Melbourne United against the Illawarra Hawks. They defended the interior much better than they had in recent weeks. And that will be pleasing for them, but there are some big tests coming up. They play in Adelaide this week, and that's a city where they've given up a lot of free throws in recent years. After that, it's New Zealand and then the top two. So we're going to learn a lot about Melbourne in the next two or three weeks. Looking at the Phoenix, you know, their debut season is reminding me a bit of Brisbane's re-entry to the competition. Brisbane were second after nine rounds that season. They uh, were in the top four in nine of the first 11 rounds, but then injury and their lack of depth took its toll and they dropped away. You know, the Phoenix, they're still fighting. They're not dropping right away, but they are overmatched defensively. Simon Mitchell's trying a lot of schemes to cover for their defensive weaknesses but it's resulting in them being quite reactive defensively. If they can't find a way to dictate the terms with their defense and then generate run, they're not going to make the playoffs. Next up, they've got Illawarra, followed by the top two. If they can get two out of those three, maybe there's still a chance. Yeah, wishful thinking. I would have thought uh, PK for Phoenix, they, they're not a great defensive team and big mistake with uh, their import at the start of the year, but they've done a lot of things right to be able to build from Phoenix. And uh, interesting with United, not convinced where they're at at the moment, just whether they're as together as what you might think as well. Uh, still a little bit of time for them to be able to pull together though. Yeah, I was quite, I am not so um, disheartened by what they put together, particularly on the weekend. I thought Chris Golding was really solid. And, and as we heard from him, I mean, prior to what he said just before, but he just, he, he seems really positive and, and confident in his team. And I feel like if, like I, I believed him. 
I'm not sure he is. I'm actually the opposite. Okay. I'm a bit more sceptical because uh, some of the body language would suggest that that's not the case. On the weekend, it was different. Gold, they got gold in the ball for the first time in a long time, mm -hmm. uh, but then they lost Trimble. So they haven't found a way to be able to bring those guys together yeah. and work together. Hopefully it changes because I think they've got the talent. All right, well, I take it neither of those two are your player of the week. Who have you got? Player of the week, who do we have? Let me have a look. Where Plenty am of I? candidates. Uh, okay, I am going with, how could you go past Lamar Patterson? 35 points, seven rebounds, four assists. Did it in a crunch game. He did it from all over the court, led by example. He is a freak and one of the best players in the comp. Certainly is. Uh, I've gone with Jay Sean Tate. 20 oh, points, like seven rebounds against Adelaide, but he just came, he, he, he yeah. went out firing. How good is that poster from the, uh, was it the beginning of the game or it was towards the end? I haven't seen it, but I can imagine he's got his legs spread. Oh, it's like. it's. I reckon it's the best picture of the season so far. But he was excellent, and he provides energy. He's, he's so good. His little euro he goes left and right. I love him too. I think he's perfect. Honourable mention: Dane Pano. You yep. stole my thunder before. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. No, <laughs> Seventeen <laughs> points, nineteen. You said twenty, maybe it's twenty. Uh, it was fantastic. Abercrombie. He came out with a mindset, Abercrombie. Mm. Right from the start, he was in attack mode. We know we can do. Um, and Hobson, one of my favourite players in the competition, he was a star as well. So I've got one more, okay. DJ Newbel. Yeah, Newbel. Twenty-eight been points. The only yep. concern for that is the fact that Cairns were leading by so much and almost threw it away in that fourth quarter. So I don't know whether because of that he doesn't get it, but I thought he was excellent. He's the other played night. great D too. He's yeah. been a really good defensive player, Newble. Great yep. pickup for them. It's time now for the Unibet game preview. Who's hot? Who's not? All right, it is time for our Unibet a game preview for round 15. Uh, New Zealand Breakers at the Taipans. Who have you got? You're probably going to have to go Cairns 1 to 10, but if you can get odds on either team under 6.5, I would be going that way. I think it's going to be another close game. Hard to tip against a New Zealand the way they're playing. It's going to be a fantastic game, I think. I've also gone at Taipans just because they're at home 1 to 10. Uh, Perth Wildcats uh, at the gong. Well, I think Perth have to bounce back, and I think they'll do that 11+. plus. I love what Matt Flynn's done with the Illawarra Hawks. These mm -hmm. young kids, they're playing together. They play hard. They're unselfish. But the intensity they're playing with uh, has been a pleasure to watch and so much better at the start of the season. Uh, but I'll go Perth 11+. plus. Yeah, I've done the same thing. I think they've got too much, to, uh, too much on the line in that one. Uh, the Taipans again, they're in Sydney. Well, Cairns have beaten Sydney in Sydney this year. I think that will get turned around. Second game for Cairns on the weekend. The Kings have to win this one. I think it'll only be 1-10, to 10, though. Um, Cairns have been impressive. Great minds think alike. I've done the same there. Melbourne United in Adelaide on Saturday. Well, this is going to be a high-scoring game, um, as most Adelaide 36ers games are. They play at a huge speed, but I think that will fuel... Uh, Tremble and Golding and some of these guys as well. So I think Melbourne United win 1-10. to 10. All right, I've gone for the upset there. Oh. I, I just think Adelaide still have more to give. So Adelaide 1-10. to mm. 10. Uh, The Bullets at the Breakers across the ditch. Well, this game could come down to whether Sec Henry's actually playing or not. Uh, with that calf injury. I doubt that he will take the court against Cairns. I could be wrong, but after dealing with lots of calf injuries myself, you would think that uh, if he actually tears this thing, he's going to be out for the rest of the season. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll go for New Zealand at home. They need a win, uh, but I think that's a tight one as well. Brisbane have probably played their best basketball they've played all year. Yeah, uh, same breakers, 1-10. to 10. The Phoenix uh, against the Hawks, that also is down the gong, so two home games for them. That is going to be a big one. Um, I'm going to go with Phoenix just because they're going to be desperate to be able to get this win, but I don't think there'll be much in it. Uh, Illawarra have been really competitive at home, got a couple of big scalps at home as well. Um, so no reason why they can't win, but I'm going Phoenix 1-10. to 10. I've gone Hawks for the upset. I know that they're just about out of, they're out of the four now, but I think that they can really cause some teams problems. Uh, the Hawks 1-10 to 10 from there. And continuing with the Unibet, a game preview with the NBA, Miami at the Pacers. I am loving the NBA this year. Yeah. Absolutely love it. I know some people haven't been, but uh, this is a really even game as well. Miami's one of my favourite teams. I uh, love the way they play. I love the way they're coached. Uh, and Indiana have been good as well. I think it's going to be a flip of the coin, uh, but I'm going to go with Miami 1-10. to 10. I've done the same thing. The Heat beat the Pacers by one last time they played them. Bam Adebayo has been absolutely killing it. I'm such a fan. Uh, second game, Houston at OKC. Westbrook back again. Oh, well... 
you're probably going to have to go for Houston. Um, just out of pride, you know Westbrook's going to go to work. But sometimes yep. that can hurt him as well because maybe he's going to try and take 30 shots. Harden might not get his 30 <laughs> shots. Dribble, 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 dribble. Um, but I'll go with him 1-10. to 10. I can't stand the way they play. Uh, and finally, the <laughs> Lakers in Dallas. I, this is a potential conference final for me. Yeah. Mm. I mean, Dallas have been great. Dallas have already beaten the Lakers at home yep. uh, this year. Uh, Donkic looks like he's just slowed down a little bit after coming back from injury, trying to get himself going a little bit. I think the Lakers are going to win this one. 1-10 one to 10, uh, should be a cracking game, though. No, I reckon the Mavs are getting up in that one. All right, um, thanks for having me. You Thank you Looking, for coming. No. Thanks for saving us. Carfino's holiday. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to have Steve back. Such a legend. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us to uh, subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts. We promise Steve will be back doing this yes, role next yes, week. Um, thanks to our sponsors, Unibet, TCL Plex and News Corp Australia. We'll see you guys next week. This is a co-production by News Corp Australia and Closer Sports.